Let's talk about burnout. You're constantly hustling and grinding, doing the same thing over and over again, day in, day out. Even if you were working towards a purpose, you grind so hard and so much that sometimes you even end up losing direction. It somehow leads to those days where you're exhausted and you just can't quite function. You don't want to get out of bed because all you want to do is sleep. Four cups of coffee you've downed just doesn't quite give you the kick you need. Red Bull doesn't give you wings either. But when your hit finally hits the pillow, you end up tossing and turning all night because there are just so many thoughts swirling around in your head. I've had many nights like that. Is it me? Why do I keep feeling like this? Maybe it's just a phase. Maybe I just had to go for a holiday, sleep it off, and I'll be fine. It wasn't fine. The holiday came and went, but just one day back, I was already overloaded and backlogged with emails and texts, and I had to attend to them all. And my zen just disappeared. I asked Google, why am I feeling this way? How do I get more energy at work? And why can't I sleep at night? Typical answers I got were, get more sleep, drink more water, practice meditation, and eat more nutritious foods. So that's what I tried to do. After a week or two, I still couldn't quite shake the feeling, but I just had to force myself to be more positive. Be grateful for what you have, damn it. Honestly, it made me even more stressed because the methods continued to fail and I continued to feel crappy. Why in the world was I still feeling this way? When I wasn't working on corporate stuff, I was always working on my side hustle, creating content. When faced with a choice to either rest or hustle, it was such a conflict. I knew I wanted to rest, but the logical side of me said, stop slacking. Your laziness is the biggest obstacle in the path to your dreams. More often than not, I chose to hustle. And yeah, I got things done, but it was at the expense of me getting even more drained. Even when I chose to rest, I ended up beating myself up and feeling super guilty because I knew that I could be working on something, but instead here I was slacking. It was so hard to find that balance between resting and pursuing my dreams. The days of feeling this way continued to pile up and it all started becoming one big blur. I slowly sunk into a minor depressive state until I snapped. It hit me that I was severely burnt out and I needed to do something to take control of my life. And that was the day I decided to quit my job. So the term burnout peaked during the days of COVID, but it's far from being a new phenomenon. It's been one of the hottest topics in the corporate world in the past couple of years thanks to COVID and the Great Resignation. And everyone seems to be burnt out. Studies have shown that burnout leads to health problems like obesity, depression, and even suicide. So it's extremely important that we learn how to deal with it and heal from it. But out of everything I've heard, a lot of advice has been dished out to companies on how they can help employees from burning out but I couldn't find as much information on how we as individuals could actually counter or fight burnout. To solve for my burnout, I went around in circles for two years, hopping from one company to another. I thought a change of environment and job would excite and challenge me, but as you all know, this didn't work out until I left the corporate world. When I finally had the time to rest and felt free from the shackles of a corporate world, I woke up every day feeling super refreshed and relaxed. I suddenly had all the time and space to disconnect, to pursue the things I wanted to do and spend time with the people I loved and just be happy. One fine day, when I was doing some research on topics of the future of work, I came across this interesting thread by Ben Mir on how to avoid burnout and I finally found the answers that I was looking for. The fascinating thing is that we as humans actually need different types of rest. Here are the seven types of rest we need, plus I added one bonus one on my own. Physical rest is taking a break from physical activity which is important because the lack of sleep and overtraining can deplete the body's energy. There are two types of physical rest, passive rest which involves getting like 8 hours of sleep. There's also active rest which involves activities like stretching or getting a massage to give your body a chance to relax and recharge. Mental rest means taking a break from thinking too much, which is important because overtaxing your brain can cause a mental rest deficit. To achieve mental rest, try writing down your to-dos, use checklists, create a wind-down ritual, take breaks from problem solving, and try meditating. Social rest is taking a break from people who drain your energy and spending more time with people who give you energy. It's important to evaluate your relationships because being around negative people can impact your mood and energy levels. For introverts, it's also important to block out alone time to recharge. 
Spiritual rest is feeling connected to something bigger than yourself and you can achieve this by volunteering, working at a purpose-driven job or participating in faith-based activities that align with your beliefs. Sensory rest is taking a break from overstimulation, so try turning off notifications, limiting video meetings, creating a relaxing ambiance with soothing music and candles and yeah, taking a break from social media. Emotional rest is when you feel like you can't be authentic. So it's important to spend time with people you can be yourself around or talk to a therapist to release emotional labour. Creative rest is when you appreciate beauty in any form, whether natural or human created. To achieve creative rest, try enjoying sunrise or sunset, going for a walk in nature, or engaging with inspiring music, books, documentaries, that sort of thing. And the last one I added myself is gut rest. Fasting or eating good nutritious foods instead of processed foods loaded with high sugar or sodium content. I think your gut rest changes and resets your system and can physically help you feel better overall. You can check out Ben's Twitter thread in the description, I'll link it down below. And you can also take this quiz to know what sort of rest deficiencies you have. I'd love to know what your results were, so share them in the comments below. Like many others, the only thing I tried to do to cure burnout was to eat more, binge watch Netflix, play video games, mindlessly scroll through social media because I didn't know how else to rest better. In fact, these activities probably depleted more of the rest I actually needed. Given the amount of time I spent at work, I also actively practiced revenge bedtime procrastination, which refers to the decision to delay sleep in response to stress or a lack of free time early in the day. Before understanding the concept of rest, I couldn't quite categorize or dissect how I was feeling. It was simply this feeling of being overwhelmed by everything that you just want to drop everything and stop. Now things started to click. I took the rest deficiency quiz and I realised that I was in dire need of emotional and spiritual rest when I was working at my previous company. I wasn't working in a purpose-driven job. It didn't allow me to be my most authentic self given the lack of psych safety I had at work. With being a full-time YouTuber, I realised that I'm always thinking about my channel like how can I continually make it better and improve? I try to maximise my routines and be disciplined but there are just some days where I'm not up for it. Ali Abdal, one of the productivity YouTubers I really look up to, similarly struggled with balancing rest and being productive in the early days of his channel. But with the read-off, read write-off principle, he writes off days that he's not feeling up for doing something productive and will designate that day as a rest or slack day. I'm learning from that and doing the same thing to take days off as and when I need it. Since learning about the different types of rest, I now know that I have to prioritise sensory rest since I spend so much time staring at the screen editing and scripting. By the way, if you're enjoying content like this, please hit that like button. Apparently, it really helps the algorithm and of course, subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. So, outcomes and takeaways because what's a video without any learnings? Number one, understanding the importance of rest. Changing my mindset to understand that resting isn't slacking. Less is truly more. I've learned to stop feeling guilty and embrace rest days and apply the read-off principle. I just love curling up on the couch, either watching Disney Plus or playing Hogwarts Legacy. But for others, it might be going cafe hopping or enjoying a walk. Sometimes I still feel guilty about resting, but I take a step back to acknowledge that proper rest is an essential part of becoming the best version of yourself and it takes time. So don't be too hard and too impatient with yourself. And number two, what type of rest do you need? Most times, it's not possible to understand or know that you're burnt out and that's already too late. So it's really important to take a pause every week and have a quick check on how you feel. I personally am a huge fan of journaling because it helps me keep track of how I feel and I actually see patterns about myself emerge. Once you know you need some rest, depending on what's comforting to you and what your rest deficiencies are, make a conscious effort to replenish your energy in that specific area. For example, if I'm already overstimulated from work because of too much screen time, I'll instead take Chewy out for a walk or read a book to rest instead of watching more TV or playing video games which further stimulates my senses. I admit it does take a fair amount of discipline to not be tempted to do certain things but it will certainly help you in the long run. Number three, I think that life works very much to find balance. Too much of anything is never a good thing and this applies to every aspect in life. Honestly, when I think of balance, I always think of Star Wars. It's always about a balance with the Force. 
steps, you know, the light side, the dark side. So with everything you do, just make sure you're doing it purposefully and in moderation. Learn to listen and understand what your body and mind are telling you and learn to take care of yourself. In recent years, the conversation of mental health has become increasingly important. Even as I was clearly burning out, I continued to push myself to work in a job and environment which I couldn't thrive or feel psychologically safe in, which literally led to me quiet quitting at my previous job. So if you're interested to know why I quiet quit, check it out in this video and I will see you there.